Hello everybody! Here's a breakdown on the network and user experience in multi-user online gaming. In this presentation we explore the online gaming communications requirements and compensations. We'll explore residential and geo-proximity network latency. We'll go over the gaming PC hardware and network profiling required to run these games and we'll offer some conclusions. Let's get started. Here's a basic topology diagram where we focused on two popular online gaming companies, Valve and Epic. They are both currently hosted on the AWS East and West servers. Individual users connect to the hosted servers through the internet from their gaming PCs using either wired or Wi-Fi connections. Online gaming requirements vary with throughput and latency. Online gamers initially download a large image for each game, and the faster your downlink speed, the faster the download of that image. Online gaming requires about 0.24 to 0.8 megabits per second, which is lower than most users might think. Online gaming requires less than 100 milliseconds of latency, otherwise the user experience is impacted. AWS latency depends on the latency relative to your physical proximity to the servers and the latency of your local network. The user that starts the game selects the AWS region, NA East or NA West, and then from there it's up to you to refine the latency on your local network and select the best service provider with the least latency. Now let's discuss online gaming communications. Here's a very basic example. The gaming server is hosted in the cloud and multiple clients interact with the server from remote locations. Individual users can also host gaming servers, but that's beyond the scope of this presentation. First, each client receives an initial world state. Next, each client uses their input devices and sends their client inputs to the server. The gaming server distributes world state snapshots, or deltas, back to each client on the set frequency. The packets are compressed so less transmissions are necessary. If an outage greater than two seconds occurs, a full snapshot is sent back to the client. The client time is slightly behind the server time by the amount of a one-way latency duration. And the user input and visible feedback in the game depends on network latency, server and client CPU loading, simulation tick rate, data rate, and the world snapshot update rate, but most of all, network latency. So let's talk about some of the compensations done. Let's start with interpolation, which is done for smooth viewing. A world state snapshot is distributed to the clients periodically, for example, every 50 milliseconds, where it is rendered on the client display. Now let us imagine that one of those snapshots, number 204, is dropped. In other words, the client never receives it. And let's assume it receives the next snapshot after the drop packet. The client will perform interpolation between 202 and 206. The benefit is avoiding choppy glitches and smoother viewing. Now let's talk about extrapolation. Now what happens if we lose more than one consecutive packet, but less than, say, five packets in a row? In this case, the client renderer uses extrapolation with linear prediction based on known history. This is only done for less than 250 milliseconds of outages or five consecutive lost packets. Now let's talk about input prediction. We'll start without input prediction. The user presses a forward key or some other input. The client inputs are then sent to the gaming server. The game server processes the update. The world state snapshot is sent back to all the clients and the display is rendered after a round trip delay, which is unfortunately bad. Now let's talk about with input prediction. The user presses a forward key or some other input as before. The client inputs are sent to the gaming server, but this time the client also predicts the results of the user commands. The gaming server processes the update as before, and the world state snapshot is transmitted to all the clients. And lastly, the client compares the prediction with previous snapshots and corrects if necessary. This can result in rubber banding or teleporting if correction is needed. Let me show you a quick video clip 
where the user is teleported to another position. So now let's look at the impact of lag, specifically lag compensation. First we'll do without, and then we'll do an example with. Here we have the client 1 shoots at client 2, and at the same time client 2 begins to move away. Both clients send their inputs to the cloud server, but the server doesn't detect a hit due to the lag. Now let's look at lag compensation, and what happens when that's enabled. Once again, client 1 shoots client 2, and at the same time client 2 begins to move away. Both clients send their inputs to the cloud server. The server compensates for the lag and detects a hit. This is because the server moves client 2 to the position during command execution time. So now let's move on to network latency. Let's start with residential network latency. First, let's start with service provider access. If you have access to a fiber to the home solution, such as Verizon Fios, that should provide the least latency versus a copper-based solution from your local cable provider. Second, I imagine many gamers connect via Wi-Fi, but wired access, if feasible, will offer lower latency than wireless. Test your local residential latency by pinging your default gateway. Test your internet latency by accessing the internet and running a local speed test. So now let's talk about some sample network latency measurements. It's important to minimize your local residential latency. We measured latency to the local router using a supercharged Google Wi-Fi and measured 3 milliseconds. I separately snaked a Cat6 Ethernet cable to the gaming PC and measured effectively 0 milliseconds. So wired Ethernet will always be faster than wireless, assuming you don't have any physical connection issues. You should also run a speed test to measure the round trip latency, or ping, from a nearby server. In our case, we used a server located in New York City. The least latency to the speed test server was seen when using the wired connection inside the residence. So a couple thoughts on slow lengths and quality of service. If you have a slow internet connection and your gaming sessions compete with other streamers in your residence, you can consider pur purchasing one of those appliances that will prioritize the gaming traffic over other streaming applications. In our case, our internet connection is sufficient to handle many users at the same time, so we didn't need that. So some things to watch out for. Make sure you're using good ethernet cables. Specifically, make sure each connector includes a release tab, or the connector will randomly disengage and result in latency spikes. If you use a copper cable service provider, make sure you avoid the low-end splitters with limited bandwidth, and make sure they are installed indoors so they don't corrode over time. Lastly, avoid the twist-on coaxial cable connectors as these also lead to poor signal quality and greater latency as a result. Now let's discuss the latency of the internet and the impact of geographical proximity to the hosted servers in the public cloud. Here I've illustrated the locations of the AWS public cloud data centers where game servers are hosted by Valve and Epic. I'm focusing on North America where Valve and Epic host their servers in two main regions, NA West on the left and NA East on the right. I've measured the average round trip latency to the AWS servers from each destination. One gamer in a group of friends initiates the gaming session and selects the server location within an AWS region. Here I'm assuming it started in the NA East region in Sterling, Virginia. I presume that Amazon assumes that the gamers in the western half of the USA will select the NA West region and gamers in the eastern half of the USA will select the NA East region. However, my son has a group of friends dispersed throughout the United States. That means some gamers in the group will experience longer latency times due to geographical proximity to the AWS servers. Now let's talk about propagation delay. You can trace packets through the internet using tools like Traceroute and estimate the length from the source to the destination using Google Maps. Here's an example of how the packets flow from central New Jersey to the NAE data center in Sterling, Virginia. Assuming the total distance is 400 kilometers times 2 for round trip, and the round trip propagation delay is 5 microseconds per kilometer, we can calculate a round trip delay as 4 milliseconds. But the measured latency is much longer, around 18 milliseconds. This means that the network routers and switches in the AWS data center account for the other 14 milliseconds. Here's a summary that shows the local residential latency 
the latency seen by a local speed test server, and the latency and throughput out to the Valve and Epic servers hosted in the AWS Northeast region in Virginia. Now, what if the Valve or Epic servers were hosted in another cloud provider, such as Google? Here's a slide that shows the physical locations of the Google, AWS, and Azure data centers throughout the United States. For a group of friends geographically dispersed, it might make more sense to host it in the Google Cloud instead, as they have a data center located in the middle of the United States. Now let's look at the gaming PC hardware profile and get a sense for how much Valve or Epic games use. Here's a table where I outline our local gaming PC hardware and the utilization by a sample game hosted by Valve or Epic inside AWS. Specifically, we used Team Fortress 2 and Fortnite as examples. Even though we have a high-end Intel processor, most of the processing is handled by the NVIDIA offload cores. Both games require less than 2 gigs of RAM. I've included the display frame rate with each game and the network round trip latency from each AWS region, as well as the corresponding network throughput. We recently upgraded the NVIDIA card and noticed the offload core utilization decreased from 53 to 40% on TF2 and decreased from 97% to 73% on Fortnite. This upgrade also resulted in higher display frames per second. Each game image is stored on a fast SSD drive to reduce the read-write latency. The round trip latency should be below 100 milliseconds for a good user experience in these online games. Local residential latency should be minimized by selecting a service provider that offers fiber to the home if possible, avoiding physical layer issues like bad cables, bad connectors, and outdoor corrosion, and choose wired connections instead of Wi-Fi if possible. Round trip latency varies dramatically by geoproximity. A Midwest geoproximity is a more suitable hosting location for dispersed users. That completes this video. Thanks for watching.